It's irrigation day here in patch two. The plants are in the hoop houses for about a week, doing just fine, um, and time to run the irrigation. So what I'm gonna be using is uh, Aquatrax. Um, and this has an emitter built into this tape every uh, foot, 12 inches. And what I'll do is I'll run a long um, sort of manifold line of black poly pipe over there. And then every foot, I will use this tool, punch a uh, eight millimeter hole. And then I like to use these with the valve so you can control which zone. So if the plant's not completely filled out yet, you don't have to water areas where uh, there isn't a plant. So these are little valves. This will go, um, this side will go, will punch into the, uh, the black pipe. And on this side, it'll attach to the tape. So you slide the tape inside there, just like that. And then on the ends, I have um, just these stoppers that are designed for the tape. You fold the tape over two or three times and, and punch it in. So uh, it's gonna be, you know, basically, this is about 30 feet wide and about 70 feet long, approximately. So, you know, it'll be 70, 30 foot strips that'll be run across. Um, there's a little bit of a slope here, which uh, I'm a little bit worried about. Uh, you know, ideally you would go counter to the slope, but because I'm growing the pumpkins in this direction, I don't, I want my vines going parallel to the drip so that when I'm burying, uh, I'm not going up and over, the vines aren't going up and over every single uh, piece of drip tape. I learned over the years that this is a better way, but I usually am always on a completely flat piece of ground. There's a subtle slope here, so we'll see how that goes. So I have my roll set up here. When I make my last cut, I put an end piece on, and then I roll, roll it out like this. It's important, especially if you're gonna reuse this stuff a second year, that every piece is the same length. So when you put it away, in the winter and you take it out the next year you don't have to try and reassemble it with certain lengths in certain spots so i just i clip it here and i walk back up there pull it to the other post so that it's exactly the same length make my cut and then the piece that i cut i put i put an end piece on and run it down here and then i just will create all of them then i'll make the manifold piece separately and then go and connect them each individually 70 30 foot lengths all cut and i got them in batches of 15 and a 10 because otherwise they get really tangled <clears throat> when you start actually setting them up so next is taking this black pipe here laying out a tape measure so i can go every 12 inches and then this whole length every 12 inches i'll punch a hole and then that'll go in and then each one of these gets attached there. All the valves are connected. Now we just need to run all the cross pieces like that. I got someone to help me. What are you working on? Irrigation. All the irrigation is in. I got all the valves open. I just turned it on for the first time and just waiting for it to fill up. It'll take a little while for the whole thing to fill up. Uh, so I'll run it for a couple of days uh, just to make sure there are no leaks or anything funny. And then I will cover this whole area with straw uh, just to keep the weeds down and hold that top layer of moisture in place. Um, but more than anything, keep the weeds down. One small update that I made after running the system for a little while is I did have it going in on one end on the manifold and going all the way down. And I found that there was a slight pressure difference between the front side and the back side. So in order to fix that, I just ran a separate line down and then teed it right in the middle. So now you have equal pressure going to both sides and that seemed to really improve the setup. Quick update on some other stuff that I have for watering and irrigation this year. So one is I have a automatic timer that I can control from my phone with two different banks. I have one bank that will control the drip system and I have a second bank that will control overhead watering. And I use overhead watering just to keep that top 
half inch to inch layer of soil moist as well as um, for cooling on really hot days. So if it's you know gonna be over 80, 90 degrees, I'll run it on some small interval to keep cool. And this particular timer, using your phone, you can control uh, small intervals. So I can turn that thing on you know, for 20 seconds every 20 minutes, for example, something like that. Um, so those are wobblers that were recommended um, from another grower, Ben McMillan. This will be the first year I'm using them. You can actually push your nutrients and things through them as well. Um, but for the most part, I'll probably be pushing the nutrients through the drip system. And this is the other new um, item I have. This is called a Dosatron. It's an injector. And the way it works is you mix up um, any fertilizer or any nutrients here in, in concentration, and then it draws it up into this and meters it by a ratio, which you have the ability to adjust. Um, so uh, it's a pretty robust system. You can kind of hear how it's, how it's working. Um, I also have a filter on the inlet and I have a little valve here. So once it's mixed and it's the, it's the actual uh, mixture that's going out into the drip tape, I can measure the pH and measure the EC through a little valve here just to check before um, it goes all the way out in the drip system, make sure everything's good to go. This is what the wobblers look like. So the inlet is here, you put a pressure regulator here, and then they have a, a little orifice here which can be changed depending on uh, how much water you put want to put down and then the water goes up and hits all these little grooves and they kind of wobble around. So you can see here how they're operating. Try and zoom in. And uh, you can see just two of them cover this entire area. And they get really good even coverage as well. So we'll see how that goes.